Kristen, you and I both know that the way we practice as a chiropractor and a massage therapist is very different than the typical. And we always talk about to our clients, at clientele, that it's more or less that uh, we're a coach or a guide. We're not, we don't have, unfortunately, a magic wand or magic hands. We don't just do stuff to you and you go on your merry way. It's a team-based approach. Um, what is it that you find for your clients to achieve the success they want as quickly as possible? What type of role do they need to play in the sessions that they do with you? Absolutely, it's a great question. So typically when you go to see a massage therapist, you give very minimal information. My left shoulder hurts, cool, you get underneath the sheet and that's the amount of communication that you have. And after the session, they might give you a stretch or two and they might tell you to drink some water, but that's really yeah. the only information that you get from your therapist to encourage your own care. Yeah, for, for me, it's kind of like, all right, you know, um, is there anywhere you want me to work on in particular? No, okay, that's about it. Yeah, that's about the extent of it. So if you wanna get the most out of your rolfing massage session, then there are some things that you need to pay attention to between appointments. Really, I think the most important place for you in between appointments to pay attention to is what is your pain doing? We all experience pain, and so a lot of people kind of tune out and just don't give it much thought. Oh yeah, my shoulder hurts, it's that again. But paying attention to, does your shoulder hurt the same way after your session as it did before, is really valuable information. So listening, paying attention to your body and determining is the type of pain that you're experiencing, is the duration of your pain, the intensity of it, all the same as it was prior to, or are you feeling some sort of change and shift? Also recognizing other aspects, like are you getting the same amount of sleep? Are you noticing any changes in your ability to complete ac regular activities, like walking to your mailbox or standing at the counter and chopping vegetables? Your pain level might not have changed, but your endurance to complete those activities may have, and those are a really good indicator that we're moving in the right direction, even if your pain levels are still staying the same. So in between sessions, paying, listening to your body about the pain and what it is that's going on is the first strategy to get more out of your sessions. And the second really important strategy to get the most out of your sessions is communication. A lot of people come into their massage and, well, you're the professional. You, I'll let you do your thing and, and you know, I'll, I'll only tell you, I'll only interrupt you if I have to. That is not a great method for getting the most out of your care. You really need to communicate with me, that feels good, that doesn't feel good, that's too much pressure, that's not enough pressure. And, and even just making comments about like, oh man, I had no idea there, that tightness was there. Things happen when we verbalize our experience, our internal experience, when we speak it. It processes in a different portion of our brain and we have a better opportunity to overcome problems that way. The neurological processing, processing is a little bit different once it's spoken. So communication is really one of the most important aspects of getting the most out of your care and out of your sessions. With your sessions, is there anything that clients need to be doing either before they come to see you or in between appointments in order to maximize care in your sessions? What you said, the exact same thing, but maybe some variances, right? So what I, the way I look at it is that we do different things, but um, ultimately what we're doing is problem solving. We may go about it differently, right? So we're probably, if we're going, let's use the metaphor is that we're going to a destination. We're driving in different cars, right? But ultimately the goal is the same destination. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't do my job without communication. So that's why I always tell people that I'm not a magic, I'm not a magic wand. I don't have a magic wand, I'm not a wizard, right? I'm a guide. And we, I provide treatments to help make the process quicker. But ultimately, to use the car metaphor again, we're driving this car together, you're driving, I'm navigating, and helping direct the way to go. It'd be nice if everything was a straight shot and you go forward the entire time, the same exact speed, and you get your destination. But that's not how the real world works. We take left turn or right turn, turn around, take breaks, so on and so forth to get to our destination. And that's what, for, with me, a treatment plan is like. I gotta learn. I see back pain all the time. I see lots of other things too, jaw, headache, shoulder, elbow, other things. But being a chiropractor, typically it's back and neck. And I see the same type of pain patterns all the time. However, I see other patterns that's different depending on that person and that injury. So understanding behavior, which you talked about before, is like, am I feeling it more often, less often? 
uh, am I feeling it more intense, less intense? Um, is the frequency or duration changed? How has it changed? Location change? All those things, the behavior of pain and, and, um, and your experience of it is, is crucial because the behavior of it tells me first what it is and then it can also tell me why it's there and then also how to approach treating it. So the behavior is fundamental with a process and me helping someone get to the destination. Great. So it sounds like for both of us, communication during and before and after sessions is really what sets things apart. So if you're seeking care from somebody and they're not asking you questions like this, they're not provoking your thoughts into it, then it may be time to reconsider what type of treatment or who you're receiving treatment from in order to maximize your capabilities in recovering from this. And that reminds me, another part is too, you talked about homework. We always give homework. There's always mm -hmm. something to be doing. And I like to use the, the line that, hey, whatever I do in here for this 30 minutes is not powerful enough to change the 24 hours a day you use your body. Meaning that if I don't give you some strategies to help uh, to combat this problem as an overall treatment plan, we get caught into that revolving door, that hamster wheel, where it's like, ouch, I hurt, and then I feel a bit better, but then I hurt again, so I need to treat it again. I keep getting these treatments over and over and over again, hoping something works, but you feel like you're stuck in that wheel. Too often, I know both you and I, we find that with patients and clients where they're like, yeah, you know, I feel like it's getting better, or I feel great when I leave, but then it's the same thing over and over again. There always should be some sort of homework. I always leave a, a visit with giving someone some bit of homework. Nothing crazy, nothing too intense, but something they have to do or a couple things they have to do to help with the progress. It's not only meant to help you directly, but it's also helped to yield more information for us to do a better job of problem solving. Because yes, it'd be really nice if we had like these telepathic powers, we could be like, you know, we knew exactly what to do, mm -hmm. but we don't, we need to communicate because we're not those wizards. We need, we're problem solvers and we need that communication about what you're doing and, and how that experience is in order to better facilitate a problem. Because someone tells me they have back pain, great. There's so many classifications of back pain. That's like telling me, you know, you have a Chevy or you have a GM vehicle. That's very, very broad, right? Well, what do you have? Do you have a Chevy Cruze? Do you have a Tahoe? Do you have a GMC? You know, there's so many different variations. So a, a, a diagnosis is the same thing, like back pain. Uh, there's many, just because you have a diagnosis or a label, there's a variety of ways to classify it or treat it. Great. So it, if you're looking to maximize what you're getting out of sessions, whether it's with us or with other healthcare providers, communication and follow through is the most important aspect that will determine the outcome in your situations. And if you're trying to communicate and you're getting blown off, it's probably time to take off. And on that note, if you're not communicating with your practitioner, if they're not asking you questions, you're not getting an individualized treatment plan. You may, your care will be limited by their individuality to your care. You're being put into their box as opposed to them adapting to you, making specific to you. Sure.